Mm. No. All right. All right. So I'm here with BTB Media. BTB Media or Max, whatever you want to call me. Yeah, Max Wood, BTB Media. And if you don't know me, hi, I'm Paul. I'm usually the guy that's giving advice on TikTok about uni. But some of you might not know that I actually have a passion for podcasting and just talking to good people. One of the main reasons I study the course I study is so I can have great conversations with people I've always wanted to talk to. So I saw this man pop up my FYP when he started talking about all the different UK rappers and some of my favorites, including Skepta, AJ Tracy, Dave, and many more. So I just wanted to talk, I just want to chop the shit with this guy and get to know, like, essentially, how did you get, how, what gave you the idea to start TikTok? We'll start with that one. Well, I've been like, it's funny you say that I've been content creating since I was in school. Like I started off, that's where the BTB came from. I started doing fitness content and BTB initially stood for become the biggest. Like it was just fitness content. Then it turned to become the best. And I started to do like mental health content as well. Mm -hmm. And that was all on Instagram. And then last year in lockdown, I was like, what's this TikTok thing? And I, I made that kind of content on TikTok. And then just like, I was just making content and enjoying it. And I was like, let me just make a couple of videos on rap music because I feel like I know. And I kind of like took some ideas that some people have been doing on TikTok and used it for like UK rap. And it just it just blew. Like one of my ser first series went like viral. And I was like, oh, well, I could very happily talk about rap music if that's what people want to hear. I realized there's not much of that content out there. And I just continued to do that. And that's what that's what then grew. So, yeah. Um, TikTok's just such a great platform for like any sort of growth if you're a content creator. Yeah, surprised the hell out of me because I was thinking, because TikTok had been established for about, like about since lockdown, right? So my thought yeah. process was they're not going to, like the algorithm isn't going to be this thing that'll just boost anybody. They've boosted a good few hundred mm -hmm. people. They're going to be the main faces, like all yeah. the fucking Americans who have the really yeah. cringy <laughs> Snapchats and all the bullshit drama will just yeah. somehow be millionaires off this app and we'll all just be left to use this thing. So I think when I started, it was like, honestly, because I was like, I've been in a low place. That like second year wasn't the best for me, whatever. I wasn't really feeling the best. So my mm. thought process was, right, if I'm going to use this app for anything, I'm going to at least just give a PSA to these incoming first years. Because having just dealt yeah. with a bunch of whole new first years in my second year, I realized there's a lot of things these people just didn't pick up 100%. on. 100%. So like, uh, okay. That's why I did, um, like, so my sister's just started uni, uh, like, a few weeks ago. So just before she went, I made a video, kind of like my advice for anyone starting uni, because... You do hear so much about how it's the best time of your life and it's so amazing, but no one prepares you for like the downsides of it. And like yeah. just moving away from home, some people it's so easy and like a relief, whereas others it can be really a struggle. So like just, just to prepare people for facts, I feel like when I started uni, I had no, no idea that that's what I was going to face. And yeah, same, yeah. like you, you have your struggles there and it's, it's surprising. There's a ton of things you like uni just, like uni is great and I and I know 20, 10 20 years from now regardless of how this year turns out for me academically I will look back at this and at least be able to say I had some of the best memories yeah. oh, some I'm very sorry. good memories and also some very hard lessons to learn like it's a balance mm -hmm. because what people seem to look at especially our parents and like teachers and that when they're trying to get you to apply for uni probably because it makes them look good it's like they tell you it's going to be some of the best memories but there's very few times they actually tell you this is probably the first time you're gonna have to deal with you know yeah. relationship drama you know friends getting pregnant like shit that you wouldn't have thought about you already thought happened in like tv you actually have to yeah. deal with like i remember i made serious challenges honestly like you get tested like mm. not just academically you get mm. tested personally you get to figure out who you are yeah but yeah it comes at a cost as well like yeah i feel like a lot of people really haven't figured that out and i, I know i'm more comfortable with one who i'm becoming but i don't know exactly why i am just yet so like yeah. I'm now because of TikTok, it's like it allowed me to really just be myself. Because for years in secondary school, I was always this kid who talked way too much, and like I wasn't always the best at picking up when people just really didn't want him around, kind of thing. So yeah. I was always a kid who just spent all his life just talking, talking, talking. So now it's like I can do that, but there's an audience there that actually wants to hear me talk about shit. So it's yeah. like it's still taking a bit of getting used to it. It's mad when I see myself popping up on my friends' FYPs, even in uni when they tell me like, oh, you're just on my FYP. Like, wait, what? Yeah, you honestly. That? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's crazy. Like I've been, I went to Parkland Festival and a couple people were like, oh, you're, the, you're that guy that does the TikToks. And I'm like, that is crazy to me because uh, especially we've made it like during lockdown, essentially, like that's where most of the content's come from or just, yeah, in my bedroom. Mm. So like to actually be out and about and someone might like, be like, oh, I recognize you. It's, it's crazy. Like you can't really fathom it. And like, that's just TikTok, isn't it? Like it's wild. Like 
I got recognized as a club like that's in Huddersfield, and Huddersfield is tiny. Bear this in mind, Huddersfield is small as hell. Like it's between Leeds, yeah. Manchester, but it's this tiny little kind of dingy place. But bro, when I saw this little Asian kid, like Asian, I say Asian kid, he looked tiny, but he was eighteen. So he sees me, and he's like, "Yo, you're the guy from TikTok." I'm like, "Wait, what? Come again?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you just have no idea because like TikTok, obviously you see numbers like your video could do thousands of views, but you just see you just see the number like you don't That's actually it. comprehend that that is like thousands of people are seeing that like it's crazy. I think and it does make you think about kind of crazy. Yeah, it makes you think about like just your content can have an impact on someone like mm. it's mad. Like when you see the comments and shit, like for me because obviously for most of my clout let's say came yeah. from university content it's like jesus the amount of kids are really saying oh well i say kids the amount of guys similar to me older than me younger than me whatever who said yo your advice helped me your advice made me more comfortable like shit like i'm just talking as a guy who's fucked up like yeah literally I'm no it's your experiences and your like pain you've had to go through has actually yeah, helped like, people so i'm not even i like i'm even some academic kind of like mad guy like this is it, it's what makes me crazy. I've actually blown up on this app because I'm yeah. not some like granted I wish I was, but I wasn't some first class like first class student or anything. But yeah. and I see the content blown up from most uni people. You're thinking a large portion of these people are very academic, like they've got their shit on lock kind of thing. They know yeah. how to work to give themselves the best. So I'm looking at myself like how I've done it, I don't know, but I'm grateful. But I think your angle is like like when I think back on university. The actual academic part of it is maybe a third, like what from I think my experience, like it's such a small part in comparison to the whole experience of university. And I feel like you're talking about the bigger part and like the the bits that people don't talk about. So really and truly, there's not that much of that stuff out there. And like, so I said in um I started doing fitness content, then I did mental health content, and that was I started that because also in second year, I was in a doubt, like a bad place. And I couldn't, re- I couldn't really find help. And like, I kind of, I then went, basically I did a second year, then I did a year abroad. And mm. it was when I was on my year abroad and I was just alone and away from everyone and everything that I'd associated with like those feelings and those problems, or whatever. And it just like completely by myself to understand it and like just think about it and reflect on it and process it. And like, it's quite hard to process like mental stuff when you're in the situation of university where you're partying all the time or even like even if you're not it's just happening all around you or mm. you have light-hearted conversations that are not real ones so when I had that and that's when I like understood it that's when I started to make my mental health content because I was re- I realized like damn like I've learned some real deep stuff and had some really amazing conversations with people once I've started to understand it that have been through similar and like damn like men just don't talk about things they go through yeah like men really when don't. you when you can have a conversation with people about it, you realize so many people have gone through stuff as well. So like, it's really mm. important. You just shed light on these things, even in the style you do it as well, where you're like, this is something you're going to have to look out for at uni. Even just hearing someone say that you're, if you then went through it, you're like, Oh, like I'm not the only one. Like even this guy said on TikTok to thousands of people that he went through this. So like, it definitely helps like just to create content, like positive content really about negative situations. But I feel like with men, it's not that we couldn't have those conversations. It's just that the many of the safe spaces that are supposedly made for us, we still get judged. Yeah. Or it's a situation where the people around us make us feel so uncomfortable. Like they can tell you, yeah, come to me whenever, like, oh, mental health, this, da 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 da. Yeah. But you know, <clears throat> like when I'm suffering, but I have to, because of the way I am, I'm not going to have a fucking breakdown in front yeah. of everyone and be all dramatic about it. doesn't mean I'm not suffering the same. And it's but, like... Yeah, like you say, it's not that you don't want to talk about it. It's just, you're not comfortable. Like, there's not really a, safe space. a comfortable situation. Like, if I'm seeing all the boys and they're like, oh, how you doing? You're right. I'm just going to be like, yeah, I'm good. Like, instead of be like, actually, and then open up. Like, it's not really the situation. I think my problem, like, very much probably more of a me thing, since most of the women in my life, like from growing up, have been very loving and all that, my instant thought with a woman I start to trust is that, oh, I can maybe I'll just be a bit more open and honest because yeah. that's just I'm a very honest and blunt person, almost too blunt. But the issue I've found is because of me just being myself entirely without with trying my best not to think about putting up walls or anything. When those walls slip and that person reacts in a way that basically puts me in a bad way basically it even makes me feel even though i haven't done anything makes me feel off it's yeah. like i fucked up i've truly let this person in some of the yeah. worst parts of me and then they just now can 
manipulate like it all the fears and all the rational yeah. irrational come through and it's like i can't deal with this so like as men i feel like we do need to do a better job like coming on like coming to each other but in a way yeah. that's very genuine because i hate it when people preach all this crap about mental health like i might talk about mental health but you're not going to catch me posting every single mental health awareness week yeah. holiday special poster special graphic because i don't see the point in that shit i realize with even with blm and all this stuff yeah it's all well and good you're using your platform to post this stuff and i'm not being a hypocrite like yeah i know i posted that stuff i know yeah. i shared my opinion but I know I backed that up with donations to causes that yeah. I have nothing to do with, but hey. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's better than doing nothing at all, but like you got to, you've got to like use that stimulus, like posting and taking in the graphics or whatever as like, that's got to bring some action to it more than just sharing, sharing yeah. the fact that you know it or whatever. It's but yeah, I think with, um, just like with the, with the mental health conversations around men as well, like I do try and, just observe my friends more now. Like now I've been through stuff and I've, I've even had some mental health training this last year because um, I was I was the welfare officer of American football at uni. Oh, um, so I had well. some mental health training and like just learning to observe behavior and observe if something seems a bit wrong instead of being like, oh, he was acting weird today, like to someone else, go to him and be like, is everything all right? Like, are you good? Like, because if, if more time, like, you're not going to tell people you're going through something, but there are shows and like, even though it's hard to see sometimes, like if you really know your friends, you probably can tell they're acting a bit off and you need to have those conversations. And even just in general, I just, I tell my boys now, like now I've been through stuff and I'm like, damn, like that was, that was hard. That was difficult. And like, I don't know what people go. I just, I tell my boys, I love them. Every time I say bye, I'm like, bro, I love you. I'm proud of you. Like keep going. Like just, just anything encouraging. Cause you know, you don't, uh, don't know how much that could help you someone. I don't hear that enough at all. Like that's what I'm look, saying. I'm blessed to have like loving parents who told me regularly that they cared about me, love me, all that mm. stuff. But you just don't hear, like you, I almost ex you expect it from your family though, especially if you've been raised in a decent household or whatnot. But my issue is men don't hear that enough from the guys yeah. you really trust. Like the guys you kind of go to talk about shit you can yeah. never discuss with your parents. Like you don't hear the, oh, you're good, bro. Don't worry about it. And then you don't know how far that goes for a man. Because Honestly. I'm so sure women, for the most part, are used to hearing that when it comes. Like, they tell shout each other with compliments. Like oh, not all like, of them, but like. Even if they don't like each other, which is mad. Like, <laughs> I find that but crazy. they'll do it, yeah. Sometimes they'll give you a, a backhanded compliment to like spite you, but they're, they're disguising it as being nice. Whereas, like, you see the memes where it's like men just want a compliment, or like if you tell a man like he looks good, like that will make his day or something, but, like just a little thing like that. So, I'll say to my boys, I say, Are oh, you looking good? Like, oh, how you been? Or I like your jacket, just something little, just something positive because you with men as well like because all this shit really stems from secondary school like secondary school changes everybody without question mm. that's the main kind of transition between that's one of the bigger transitions between you know teenager like preteen to teenager and a young adult but i feel like your interactions with girls and like other guys then shape you very much for how you're gonna be going forward yeah and Jeez, this conversation's gone mad deep, but I'm loving it. I know, but I like it. <laughs> That's kind of the whole point of this Patreon thing. But like, hey, in saying that, I've always thought that secondary school is kind of this place where like a lot of your issues, looking back at them, some of them you wouldn't even have realized were as bad at the time. But then you look back yeah. after, especially being in uni, when you're still seeing the same issues with 20 plus year olds, it's like, yo, this second, this shit that happened in secondary school, I shouldn't have let that slide. Or yeah, I therefore should have gotten help earlier for that. A hundred percent. Like I didn't realize that I was in some like toxic relationship in school, but I just I didn't know any better. I didn't know any better, so I just thought this was normal. Then as soon as I got out of that and was in another relationship, I was like, oh, like it can be like this. And like yeah, it's just a lot of a lot of learning. Like yeah, that's what you do at school. You learn, but you don't realize you're learning so much about life and mm. you're going through stuff as well. I feel like the truly dumb kids in any form of education, be it primary school through to a PhD level, aren't the people that don't take it in academically. They don't help themselves in the future in terms of getting a job if you're not going to take in the shit academically. But if you don't take mm -hmm. in the life lessons you're being taught in front of, if you don't take the time to sit down and reflect on what's happened to you so far or, why, or yeah. where you're at at this point, and you don't choose to understand why things are happening for what they are, that's when you've truly messed up, in my opinion. You like to refuse to take in the life lessons that are in front of you, the free game that's right there. 
Yeah. Fair enough, academics might not be for you. Fine, so be it. Everyone goes their own path. But to not take the life lessons in and still be moving like a child when you're in a bet, when you have the chance to wisen, like broaden your horizons. Yeah. Kind of people annoy me. Anyways. Yeah, I, I think school is just definitely like one of them places where you, like, you, you don't realise what you're learning in terms of life lessons. Like it takes after, like for me, like I finished uni and I'm now like deepening and reflecting on everything that like, I went through at uni. Like you do kind of need to get out of a situation before you can like, mm. fully understand it. And I feel like at school you're quite young and you don't, you don't realise you're learning such big lessons that will help you later in life. But yeah, it's definitely, definitely shapes who we are today and like what we've been through and things like that. 1000%. Anyways, let's switch some a bit more like hard <laughs> topics. So, yo, obviously you do music content. That's how I found you. That's how we ended up just connecting, mm-hmm. really. So <clears throat> when it comes to UK rap, what would you say about UK rap right now? Is it healthy? Is it in a bad place? Good place? Where's it at? I think it's at a like stage of like something new is going to seep through because I'm thinking like, well, drill is like the biggest genre right now. And I'm not, the, I've said I'm not the biggest fan of drill. And like, it's gotten to the point now where rappers are saying like, they're not like, which I'm happy that they're not doing what they're saying they're doing in their lyrics, but they're saying like, it's all just because it's popular. Like people want to hear it, so I'm going to say it. Hmm. But it's getting to the point where it's tired now. You're saying the same thing, saying chinged up someone and whatnot. Like it's getting boring for me. Um, I feel like the new sort of genres emerging could be like the real rap, like the pot of paper and nines type people where they're rapping just serious like it's just real like they're rapping their truth which is kind of always authentic and always gonna like be well received mm. and then maybe like the more chill UK rap like there's artists like Nux and Saint that like just make good music on like a more chill relaxed beat and I think it like is so different to drill and that drill so aggressive that it's kind of what people need right now so I wouldn't say it's in a bad place but I think it's in a state where it's about to change like the UK music scene and, and also like evolution. Yeah, the grime scene I'm hoping can re-emerge. That's what I'm that's the movement I'm trying to push. I like just made a playlist of like all the best like recent grime songs so people like are aware it's still out there. But yeah. I hear that, I hear that. Because for me, like UK rap was something I kind of got into a bit late because obviously not being the most popular guy in school, like I was a kid who loved who still to this day loves his old school kind of music. Like anyone who raps like they're from the 90s or raps like yeah promoting more lyricism. So I've always been attracted to the Jayhees, the Kendricks, the... Yeah, the 90s hip-hop and the noughties. Yeah, yeah like that's what's good kind of, era. That's just kind of always been me. And then even more modern guys, like I'm attracted to the Freddie Gibbs and all that. Just American rappers who can just, who, like you said, rap their truth kind of thing. Yeah. So when I'm growing with this, I'm like, because I went to a boarding school, right? So I'm there like, you men are listening to this, bopping your head, sagging your trousers. But if you men went anywhere near these parts of London, yeah, you would be shit scared. I would be, and I'm even yeah. trying to be like them. <laughs> yeah, so like, I know it's so strange to see like the effect it's had on people out of London. Because I mean, so I like, I guess I started listening to like UK rap music like 2012, 2011, kind of like I just got Wretch's album. Like I can't even remember Black and White. I think it was like long time ago. Listen to that. That's the days when you'd listen to CDs, mm. and I'd be like, oh, like I like this. And then yeah, that's when I started going on YouTube and listen to it more. And then, like, it did start to blow up in, like, 2015, like, the grime scene. And, like, I was at all the shows and stuff. And I was like, oh, it's mad. Like, I'm, I'm seeing them at a bigger venue. Then I'm seeing everyone, like, listening to it. It's crazy. But it's also, like, just the trend. And I'm like, I've been here from, like, the start. And, like, I'm still here now. Yeah. And, yeah, nowadays, like, grime wasn't so much violent, whereas drill is quite violent. Not that people are being violent, but they're dressing, like, road men and stuff. And, like, yeah. it's just quite funny to see, like, in some of these, like, just little kids from the countryside or whatever dressing like yeah, that. Right. I can understand the actual guys who do drill, like, dressing the way they dress, because that's literally how they put food on their table. That's literally them yeah. talking about the activities they've had to do in order to get to where they are. And, look... That's somewhere I'm going to choose not to pass judgment, really, because you don't know yeah. the story. But, like, when I would see these kids doing it, like, bro, I understand media has a big influence on everyone. That is something mm. I know, hence the reason I study a media-based subject, really. But ultimately, I just sit there like, Jesus Christ, have mercy. Love the music <laughs> enough. But Honestly, I know, because, like, when I say, like, the real music is what's good, like, when drill started and it was like six seven and harlem spartans and that like they're basically yeah. just rapping what they have to go through and like mm. i mean i studied economics so like i understand like the po- politics and like the 
the like economic situation of these places because like they're not too far from where I live and stuff and like you I can understand that like if music is a way out then like go for it hundred percent and like if you've been through like crazy stuff like what you're rapping is true and you've been through it and then you've just picked up a microphone you have a lot to talk about and a lot to vent and things like that so I think that's when like music like that because that's basically how, what similar to what grime was like they were going through the same stuff but obviously they're not rapping explicitly about what they're doing but more about their struggle and that music's a way out and they have to get it so that's what I like about the music in that it's so motivating that you could be in the darkest of places and you have a way out by literally expressing yourself but like more about like nowadays it's more oh if I can just say I did this people might like it and if I do a cool dance and I wear like all the right clothes then it could work and it kind of works on social media but it's not authentic too much I've realized one thing about rap because of how rap started in the 1970s and like mm. how it basically had this huge boom in the 90s. True lyricism, true ability at rap as an ass core, being able just to talk about your experience in a way that is detailed, like the ability to tell stories through your music. That will never go away in rap music, no matter the trend. There'll be trends yeah. and fads and all this. There'll be guys they get on who there'll be guys 10, 20 years from now who barely say much of anything, but their music yeah. is like still top of the rap charts. But I yeah. guarantee you there'll always be lyricists and like like I want to say true rappers, be that in the UK or US or wherever, because that's the foundations of the house that is rap music, mm. that is hip hop. Yeah. So I honestly do I honestly have always felt that UK rap, like Drill was a bit much, but then when I really started to understand, like obviously because I've obviously right, been born here, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna hear Dizzy Rascals and that. And like over time, because of my appreciation for like American rap music and those lyrics, <clears> it put me on to the UK rappers I was always gonna like, like Skepta, yeah. obviously, then AJ Tracy, and then even then listening to a few different ones here and there, like Wretch Thirty Two. Yeah. Um, I think obviously Dave was like killing it. Yeah. What? For like only three years older than me and it's like what it's yeah. baffling like that's what like, i know well for me dave is literally like he lives in streatham vale which is a 10 minute walk from my house like and he's he's about six months older than me and so like i first heard of him when i was like doing my a levels or something and he was rapping about doing a levels and stuff whilst going through all this other stuff but it was just crazy for me to hear it and like see it and like, I even see like some of his boys that are in his videos I see them round and stuff and I'm like damn like he really is just a guy from from my area that's just talking about what he's been through but what I also like which I said on like a TikTok live the other day as well Dave's like a prime example of this but like we're saying real rap like music it gives them such a good opportunity to vent and things like that but it's also highlighting such a big problem that it's their therapy as a traumatized yeah it's, it has to be therapy for them but like I like that a lot of rappers now start to talk about mental health issues they've suffered from because like you know it can it can make rap like rap music can make that kind of lifestyle look look good or look appealing or whatever because people Mm. because it sounds cool but when they start to talk about the realness and that like it's traumatizing to like have to bury your friends or to like have to be suffering or like seeing your mum cry because you can't afford food on the table like it's traumatizing and they're talking about the pressure or the mental health element on that and like that's what I like to hear and I think that's why Dave's album like Psychodrama was so good because he just broke that all down to you like you you felt like you knew Dave and knew everything he'd been through and like I, it's just that real rap again really I feel like rappers that because if you notice it's the rappers who can like talk about the shit they've been through and just say hey look I've had to go through this but look at where I am now and I'm proud of myself those ones who can truly reflect like, reflect like be masculine but also reflect on the sad shit that's happened to them i think it goes back to that thing or like we said of how men don't have safe spaces mm-hmm. so like, now that we have our rap music or like the versions of rap music that we like the artists that we like yeah they can make turn up songs to get everyone dancing but on the same level they're going to talk about some real deep shit yeah. so you know when you hear the turn up songs they're truly like from the impression of things you can tell this person is truly happy so regardless of the drama they go through as a celebrity and the ups and downs they've had to go through whilst having fame comparison to them not having this outlet that is rap music they are in a much better place and when you feel that in the music 
it, it allows the next generation of kids to open up. Like not just me and you, because obviously we've had our own experiences to yeah. understand how our mind how our minds work and how mental health is for us. But I mean, like the thirteen year old in like year eight who's in between street life and do, but doing okay in school, it's gonna give him that chance to you know maybe go and Vent, yeah. Or you can just understand that you know maybe like. Well, one, if they listen to the music, they can hear it and relate to it, which is always good with music. And you can just re- basically listen to it because therapy to your ears. But you're like, oh, maybe I could write. Maybe I could write to express myself or make a song. Or even like some artists now are starting to build studios back in like their areas. And I'm, I, I respect that. And that's something like I did some work in a youth club. And I'm thinking like, yeah, like imagine if like someone built a studio here or even like an art studio so you can learn to express yourself through that. Or just you need to, I feel like, with mental health like one of the best ways just to look after it or like just to feel okay or just just track your mood really is to actively try and express yourself even if that's just playing a sport or like writing a book or writing poetry or writing lyrics that however it is like expressing yourself you know you can't always have someone to talk to so if you have a way to express yourself then that's just just so healthy and like just helps you understand your feelings and where you're at really yeah it's a beautiful thing and I think even a lot of the artists we hear emerging now in the UK, the ones that, yeah, still rap about the shit they've gone through and are a bit, uh, like, aren't really my thing. I can understand their appeal because even if they're just not really my kind of people, like, bro, mm. when you rap, you hit people on a different level. And even even though you've definitely gone through struggles, you're going to start beefs for drama and whatnot, even if that's mm. your lane. I can just tell that you are in a better position than you were. Like when you talk, yeah. when you were talking about guys at Digger D, who's literally my bloody age, built like a tank, has the pop smoke braids, look like looks like a whole thug. Yeah. And you told me the guy got like went to jail when like year eight. Jeez. I know. Yeah, literally, he's like, been in and out of jail since that age. Really, like it's like, crazy. When I heard that, I realized these guys are doing so much better. You can tell when they when they're doing the fake beats for the persona for furthering their music career. Yeah. I know you've they've they've seen the real hood shit and they know yeah they aren't going back to that. Like I don't care if they if they go back to it once or once in a while because they still might have one or two boys there, but they know they themselves probably won't touch that again because they see this. Hopefully, yeah. Fun. You see people like Nines that got a, a back in jail now and he's had a number one album. Like that's crazy. But I do think as well, like we mentioned age and like it's crazy how young they are. But I think like going through the stuff they've had to go through, even like going jail age, like 13 or whatever, like that you grow up very quickly. Like, um, like you don't realize it even when you go to uni as well. Like some people just their maturity are like some are so mature because that maybe they've been so independent from Mm -hmm. young age or some like so immature because they've been spoon fed their whole life. Like you, you don't really, even though you're the same age, like you're not the same. Mature life at different like, speeds, and like the more you go through, the faster. Like you say, you went through some stuff in second year, and now you're like, now you're understanding it and helping people. Whereas someone's probably in third year or might even graduate and haven't been through anything yet, and like it will take them years to come to fully understand their mental health, like just understand people on different journeys. And the thing is, I want to make this clear. Like, I'm not perfect. I still fuck up on a day-to-day basis. And hell, I look back at some of my own advice, like, yep, maybe I should have <laughs> listened to myself on this one. But um, in a lot of these situations, I feel like it's, you really see people grow when they have, when they're independent, but they have the option of going one of two ways. So when you have the option of going to uni and, you're, and now in this whole independent new part of the country, and you've been a sheltered rich kid, for example, it's like, ah, shit, okay. People have had to go through struggles to get to the same position I'm in where I've just kind of had it there for me, really. Yeah. And then some people, you have the choice of, do I become an empathetic person? Do I begin to understand and choose to make friends with these people and just be a like all-around good guy? Or do I choose to, you know, keep with my kind of friends that I've seen my whole life and exclude those who had the struggles that I've never even thought were struggles in my life? And when you see those micro decisions being made, can you see them in uni just constantly? Like whether it's to, you know, do some drugs before a big test or go out when you have no money and you barely have food on the table, but hey, you're doing okay. Yeah. And you, like, like all those kind of micro decisions are, shape, are literally shaping us. And the crazy thing is, we're all so young across the board. Even like yeah. across the board, like me and you are what, in our very early 20s, and then yeah. most uni students are like 18 to 21. And in this internet age as well, I feel like 
we've had to, we, in a way, we've matured in some ways that the kids from the 90s and the 80s wouldn't have. But we've also lost some of the morals and the values that they would have been, that would have been installed in them through not having as much of an exposure to technology. Because yeah. I think about the madness that, like, bro, the kids in secondary school, starts in secondary school now are 2010s kids, bro. Like, that's, that's madness. crazy to me. They've grown up with an iPhone. Like, <laughs> they literally grew up with a fucking I- what? iPhone, I iPad, imagine. already there from birth. So now imagine, yeah. like, they're gonna, they're going to be obviously tech savvy, but then they're also gonna be these kids that, like, they're gonna be able to handle certain topics, certain social issues in a mm. way that we couldn't have or we probably won't do in our time as the teenage or the young generation. But they're going to lose even more on like the morals and like fundamentals and social skills that the kids our generation had. And then even yeah. more on the kids from the 90s, etc. So I feel like as we advance, we have no choice but to grow. And even those kids, going back to the kids in the hood, like the rappers and that, a lot of them, you're always going to be mad. When kids from their kind of struggle are the 2010s yeah. kids. Yeah. Like, sh- that's going to be crazy to me. Like, in my head, I'm going to think, you've had so many opportunities to do well. Why did this happen? Da, 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 da. But then I'm also going to think, yeah, but they still didn't have fundamental things that the kids older than me had. Yeah. And it's like, shit, that's... When you see these micro decisions, they... And you, like, you try not to deep them as much because, you know, take everything day by day. But looking yeah. at them in hindsight, you see how every low decision, especially with technology, is literally either going to change your whole life course for that week. Yeah. And it just changes everything. Yeah. But, I mean, I even find that crazy with, um, like, just, just to relate it to, like, my day-to-day life, like, making little decisions and how much impact I can have. For example, I try and make one or two TikToks, even three, every day. Mm. And, like... For example, yesterday I was just knackered and didn't didn't make any. But like sometimes when I'm knackered and I don't feel like it, but I, I, I like get one out anyway. Sometimes that video could do like a hundred views. Sometimes that video can like blow, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I almost like didn't post the video yesterday, and now like it's just boosted so much and it's opened this opportunity. And now this person follows you, like that's crazy. Like so, I just try and always like when it comes comes to making little decisions. Well, that's. That's what BTB stands for, become become the best version of myself or yourself. So initially my content was just to inspire people to become the best versions of themselves, whether that's teaching you about or just talking about a mental health thing, whether it's literal motivation, whether it was fitness and like this is how you do this exercise so you can become the strongest version of yourself. Like that was initially my thing. So um yeah, that's what I'm that's like how I try and make my decisions now. So if I'm thinking oh, do I make a TikTok or do I just lie down in my bed like, and chill? Like, no, nah, let me try and make the TikTok because that could potentially be like such a positive thing that I did that day. So yeah, even like if I want to see my friends or I want to like go home, if I want to chill at home, I'm like, all right, well, seeing my friends could could make their day, could make my day like, cool, I've got nothing to lose. Let me like try and make the positive decision or the decision to become the best version of myself like, and try and recognize that these tiny decisions can have such a big impact as well. Yeah, like I have this thing a lot where I can think of a great idea in my head and I want to do it. I'll get to recording it, but I'll think, nah, it's going to be real cringy or I have no way of doing it in a way that feels authentic enough to me. And then I just won't post for a while. And then I think, crap, I have literally my biggest audience I've ever had. And I'm still seeing interactions with my old videos, like the ones that literally went viral over the summer. And yeah. then I'm just there like, yeah i'm just there like whoa i need to give these people something because now you're in uni there's new opportunities like you can actually talk about certain things you can you know give these people like something because even if my video only hits a thousand views which oh yeah i'll be honest i'm a big numbers guy so it hurts a little but at the same time when i see the comments of oh this helped me or well done or just, honestly it's that 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 is what why you do it like because especially when there's no money coming into this like for me at least I have yeah. no sponsors. I've been approached for one sponsored post. And even then, it's not, I don't know. But a lot of the time, yeah. even if there's not money coming into this, I don't have 100K followers or whatever, and I'm not some influencer. I got this by being myself. So when yeah. I make this content, I can be, any content I put out, I always know I can be proud of, even if it only hits a thousand views, because you made it as yourself and it's going to help someone because they can see you are being yourself which if we now relate back to the point of 
okay, with uni, if you are being yourself and showing that, yeah, I'm going through struggles, but I'm trying to be a better person or Mm -hmm. shit's happened to me, but I'm actively trying to be a good person with my group of people, people will gravitate to you naturally. Maybe not the popular crowd, but you'll get a crowd of people or some people who genuinely will care about you. And then going Mm -hmm. and relating this back to the rappers, when they are being themselves, regardless of what genre or how they are. As well. You have to respect it. Like, yeah. Regardless if I'm not a fan, shit, if it's, if it's helping people, you're making money, you're living your life well, and as long as you, like, are able to be healthy financially, all power yeah. to you, bro. It's, but- it's a balance between <clears throat> authenticity and, like, you could spit the realest rap and, like, like, a thousand people could absolutely love your whole album and just really love you. Or you can do trendy and whatever's popping now and make one song yeah. that gets played in clubs and people like it, but they don't really care about you. It's kind of like that relates to so many elements of life. Like with our content creation, <clears throat> I, if I make genuine videos, like I'd rather less people see it, but they relate and they like it and they interact with me and I have a, almost a fan base, than it go viral um, because I did a, a trend, but then people just care about the video. They don't care about you. And then it even goes back to like, um with uh with uni like when you start uni you could go and be yourself and like you know we're not perfect we're learning but if you just are genuine to who you are you'll find you'll you'll make friends that are genuine to themselves as well because they like real recognize real in that way yeah. or you can just you know wear the latest clothes like because that's what that's what's fashionable i don't know go to the club where they're playing the music that is just fashionable right now like you could you could just fit in, which a lot of people try and do at uni. They try and fit in when really and truly, yeah. there's, that's what I was telling my sister because she was <clears> like, I'm worried I'm not going to make any friends. I was like, listen, like, you're going to be in a flat with what 12 people, whoever's, whatever number. Yeah. They don't have to be your friends. Like, you don't have to try and fit in with those 12 people. Just there are cool. thousands of people at uni. Like, you will find your friends. You'll yeah. find people that like you. There's, there's a society for everything. So, like, there's Good. something you like and you join that society with people that like it, you're going to make friends there. Like, you don't have to fit in. If you be yourself, that's how you can, like, really have the best time at uni. Like, that's, like, kind of the best advice I'll give for right. life, really. Like, it relates to so many things. Just yeah. be yourself. 1,000%. But since we are quite close to wrapping up, I know you have, like, other and other yeah. things to do. Okay. <clears throat> what was your crazy experience in uni? And explain why. The craziest? Yeah. But it's eight. Uh, I would say, oh damn, there's <laughs> there's a lot. Um, <laughs> like when my friends come down for my birthday, we had some fun. But I'd say probably like the highlight was um we're not allowed to say initiation, my welcome drinks when I started American football. Yeah. That was that was crazy. Like we were young, like I was 18, it was about a month into uni. So I only met these guys at training like three or four times. And like, cause American football is like such a big sport. Like we basically sub, like did it in positional groups. Mm. So I was in like the linemen group, which I don't know if you know American football, but the linemen are like the biggest people. Yeah. I mean, I was small, but I somehow ended up in this group. And um, yeah, like there was just so much drinking, but it was also like, for example, you had to like read your personal statement out and like drink every time you lied or whatever. <laughs> but that's when I realized as well that like, I'm not in London anymore. And people think very differently. And that's when I realised, like, someone must have said something like, oh, hands up here, who voted Brexit? Because obviously these guys are older, they could have voted. Loads of them are, like, putting their hands up. I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, I didn't realise. Like, that was, like, kind of, like, an awakening for me. That's what happened also, to me coming from down south. The north honestly, south divide like, is mad. You don't you think don't, it's crazy, but it is. You don't realise, like, well, I grew up in London, and, like, London, especially my school, is well, so diverse, like, so diverse. But the only people you don't mix with are the people that aren't from London and, like, like the rest of the country that you know voted for Brexit and voted the Tories in and stuff. I'm like, damn, like I'm actually with these people. No, like, but anyway, like <laughs> just in terms of the night, I'll just say that I woke up <laughs> in an alleyway covered in <laughs> vomit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I had no idea where I was. And it was only like midnight at this time because the, the drink started at like seven. And yeah, no one knew where I was, no one knew what happened to me. To this day, I don't know how I ended up there or how I got home, but I just got home. And then uh, just sat in the shower for like 40 minutes, just like deep in life, like going, oh my gosh, what happened? Damn, yeah, it was wild. It was crazy. Okay. It wasn't too fun. I've had, fun, I, I did have fun at uni, but that was probably like the craziest story like that happened to me. What advice would you have given to yourself? If you had to start uni all over again and you saw like 18 year old you before he went off to his first year, what advice would you give to yourself and why? I would just say like, well, to be yourself, but like, 
when you're 18, you don't know what that means or you don't know who you are. But like, don't try and fit in. Like, try and like make people like want to be your friend as opposed to like you just doing everything to be their friend. Like, try and fit in. Because it took me a while to like find like my proper friends at uni. Mm. And I kind of, I just wish I'd done that a bit earlier. But because, you know, you got into the problem where you like, instantly decide your second year house in the first month of uni and you're like that was stupid like why did I do that um but yeah I'd just say that really like just just be yourself and like take your time. yeah to be fair actually that that would just be straight up the best advice I'll give don't decide your house <laughs> for second year before Christmas like don't do that just that. To... to be fair a lot of the good houses do go very early they but... do but I'd rather live in a like this a last year we lived people. we lived in like it was falling apart but we made it a home still like the, mm. we were just such a good like group of people that it didn't really matter how bad the house was we made it work i i hear that and now closing comments with this whole tiktok thing where do you see it going and what do you want to create out of it is there anything you want to promote as well feel free to do it yes yeah, so at the minute I, i've just dropped btb freestyles like the first two episodes where basically i just I know some rappers and like people are reaching out to me on TikTok where I get like producers I know to like send their beats. So we're bigging up the producers and bigging up the rappers. And I'm just like, so I'm trying to make BTB Media almost like a platform, like a new platform, like a GRM Daily or a SBTV where I can post rap content and like big up people and, you know, help people become the best versions of themselves. But then also my personal goals are like, I would love to get into presenting and like, uh, interviewing people as well so like this is this is a great experience for me like being on a podcast for the first time because down the line I'd love to have a podcast too um, yeah, exactly. but yeah I'd like to be a personality but not like a you know one that's just trending or that tweets on something for being controversial sake to get in getting views or whatever I'll, I would like to just like you know genuinely interview artists or be backstage at a festival or things like that I'd love to, mm-hmm. I'd love to like you know, sort of like Harry Panera kind of thing, like just have sit down with people and talk to them, but also do fun YouTube stuff and whatever. Like that's what I'd love. That's what I'd love. Yeah, I hear that, bro. Honestly, man, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And oh, now you, you man. now we've gone and have the conversation. I'm gonna check for your content even fucking more now, bro. Oh, I appreciate I'm that, man. Doing this, man, hundred percent. Like for my first actual podcast that hopefully people will pay for. Thank you. I couldn't have asked for a better person to start this off. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Big up yourself as well. Like you're giving some real advice to people at uni that like they need to hear as well. So big up yourself. Honestly, I'm just a guy who talks too much, but I appreciate <laughs> it.